Thank you, guys. Um, I'm excited. Next week, we're going to start a new series. It's uh, part of the marriage series that we're uh, with the small groups that we're a part of right now. It's called After the Ceremony. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And there's a lot of things. There's a lot of positives about marriage and a lot of challenges that we face. And we're going to look back at the scriptures and uh, say, okay, what does God have to say about these things so that uh, about marriage and how we can navigate successfully, especially through those challenging times? And, um, and so we're, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully you'll be a part of that. If there's a couple, like a family that you know, don't, I mean, that, that might get the wrong signal, but just say, we'd love to have you come. We're going to be talking about marriage and family and stuff like that. So um, you, you encourage people to come and, and stuff like that. It'd be a great, I think it's going to be a great series. Uh, looking forward to that. Now, um, I'm really looking forward to finishing up the series. I, I hope it's been good for you. I think the whole point is, it's just, again, it's just a reminder of how important this is and it, or it should be in our lives. And that when you come to church and you're a part of a church family, there are benefits that it brings about in your life. And we talked about like getting guidance and, and uh, you know, being a part of a team, knowing that you can get involved and use your gifts and abilities uh, to accomplish the mission God has given us. But also last week we talked about uh, having the loving support of a church family. I cannot imagine how some people can navigate through the challenges of life without having a church family. And I know that people do, but I, I find that it's just great to have somebody uh, a church people that love that love me, love God, and uh, that will come around me. And uh, I shared with you a little story about my life last week, and I appreciated uh, the encouragement to that. And also, uh, but I also found how real it is this week. And uh, I think a lot of you know my brother-in-law went in for uh, uh, was going in for surgery. He's got a esophageal cancer, and uh, they had given him radiation and chemotherapy and all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, so they were up at the Mayo Clinic, and they were going to do surgery. They were going to remove uh, the, uh, the uh, esophagus and then work the stomach, and uh, that would become all that, and, uh, which is amazing. I just think God's an amazing architect, how he works all this stuff out. Uh, but when they went in for surgery, they came back out and said, uh, we cannot continue. He's, he's inoperable at this time. And, um, and so I think you understand what that means, and, and there's a lot of stuff going on there, and... Um, so they're going to go back and talk to their oncologist and kind of see what the next step is. Um, but right now, what we're doing is we're just going to pray for a miracle. And uh, we believe that God is able, amen? Um, we believe he's able. And we don't know what he's going to do. But, um, but we believe that he's able. And uh, man, I can't imagine like going through all of that and not having a church family around me. Just praying for me. Praying for God to do what he's going to do. And, 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 uh, and, but that's one of the benefits you get about being a part of the church family. And so never, don't neglect this thing. Don't neglect the church family. And, and I know sometimes we miss, and sometimes you see me in the, in the, uh, the grocery aisle and you like dodge me, you know, because you know, it's like, oh, he knows he's going to say he didn't see me last week. And listen, I don't, I don't want you to think I'm going to jump on you. So like if you miss a week, I'm not going to like send the, the hounds out for you. Um, but I, I am aware, and I do look, and I'm just wondering, just, I want to make sure you're okay, really, I really do, I just want to make sure you're okay, I want to make sure that uh, life is going all right for you, and all the stuff that's going on, so, um, but make it a priority in your life, and uh, I think it'll be good uh, for you. On a side note, this, I always do a vision series um, every year, and this is that vision series. So basically, everything that we're talking about, the benefits you get about being a part of a church family are these four life applications. You know, you get the Word of God, you get to serve, you get relationship. Today, we're going to be talking about that last value, which is that you and I get to be a part of something that, like, that we get to experience like a new beginning, like a, like a start over. Uh, uh, there's like that delete button on the computer. Ever, ever need that before? Like, ever need that when you're tired? and something you make a mistake and like there's things in life where you're like I wish I could just start over and I wish that I could just redo this and uh, that's what you get in Jesus is that Jesus can help you to start over he can give you new life and new beginning and that's exactly what we need don't we we, we need this new fresh start and that's what you get when you're a part of the church family. And uh, there was a guy that I was reading his story. It was just amazing listening to his story. Um, you may know this guy. Um, he, he's read, uh, written a couple of books. He's also uh, the star of a TV show. And, uh, um, and then uh, like, like he's like all around the country. Like everybody, everybody seems to know him. I think maybe a guy by the name of Phil Robertson. Have you ever heard of that guy before? Uh, just a little guy. And, um, but, but the thing about him is what you know about him now is not very much what you saw prior at the beginning of his adult life. 
See, what you see now is this guy that's standing up for Jesus. It's like going around the country saying, listen, we need to come back to our roots. We need to get right with God. We need to follow Jesus, follow his word. His word is true. And this is what you hear today. When you watch the show Duck Dynasty, you see that they end their show in prayer. They believe in God. They trust in him. And they want to live their lives for him. But that's not how it began. How it began was he was completely lost. I mean, here's this guy, he's a stud of an athlete, and then he's, but he decides, I want to I wanna hunt most, most of the time, he wanted to hunt, and he's building these duck calls, but he was struggling with alcoholism, he was messing around, and then, if that didn't make matters worse, when he'd come home, abuse was all over the place, and so he's just like, I mean, this guy was completely lost, if there's anyone, as you've seen him today, you're like going, that can't be the same guy. And see, when he was talking to his wife, they actually, Fox had an interview with his wife, and they're like, knowing what he was like before, why didn't you leave? And she said, my grandma taught me one thing. She said, you fight for your marriage, and you fight for your family. And she didn't want to give up. And I thought about that. I thought, isn't that the way God feels about us? Is that when God writes, when people write us off, when people look at us and say, man, they'll never amount to anything, or man, look at the things that they're involved in, God never writes us off. And see, and that's the hope that we have in Jesus, is that we can start over, that we can start over with God, and that relationship with God can help us to have a fresh, new perspective of the people around us. And that's exactly what happened to a guy named Zacchaeus. Now, I want you to turn there in your Bibles, Luke chapter 19. Now, if you grew up in the church, listen, um, you've probably read this story before. You may have even sang the song. Anybody? Have you ever sang the song, Zacchaeus? Okay. All right. few of you that know about that song. I'm not going to sing that song. But um, listen, I didn't grow up in the church, so I didn't sing that song as a little kid. But, but this story, I want you to see it from a fresh perspective this morning. See, people wrote off Zacchaeus. He's one of those guys that people wrote off. They're like, if you only knew who he was or who he is, you wouldn't want to have anything to do with him. And that was what was surrounding the the reputation of Zacchaeus. Now, Jesus at this time is a rock star, man. Everywhere he went, people wanted to see him. And they're like, I just got to get a glimpse. I mean, this guy is healing people. This guy's, I mean, if you're, you know, raising people from the dead, he's giving sight to the blind. He's, he, those that are like uh, paralyzed, they're able to walk or, or move or do what they used to do before. I mean, he was, I mean, people were just like, check this guy out. And so this is the story, okay? So Luke chapter 19, look at verse 1. So Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man, uh, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. I mean, in the pyramid scheme of things, uh, like he's like the top, and he's got his like workers that are below him, and uh, and so the people in that culture just despised the, the the tax collectors. I mean, they're like the lowest. They're like in the in a culture that values honor and and, and stuff like that. Um, they're like at the lowest rung. I mean, like these are people that are written off. Like those that, that are like, um, well, there's some other people in that category, and, uh, but they were, they were in that lowest of low category. It says a man was there, he was a chief tax collector, and he was wealthy. See, what they would do is they were stealing from people. They would say, listen, you owe your tax, and they would take a little bit off the top and put it in their own pocket. That was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was stealing from people, from the people that he worked, that worked for him, and the people that he lived with. So the people of Israel, they despised this man. Okay, he wanted to see Jesus, uh, see who Jesus was. But being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead, and what did he do? I mean, this is uh, like what's make, made him famous, but what is it? He climbed a, a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Now, this is an interesting thing. When was the last time you've climbed a tree, right? Like, you know, if you're not like John Kloppenstein, where that's what you do for a living, most of the time, you're not really climbing trees. Well, the other day, I was um, trying to clean out some, some brush, and I remember as a kid, I always, I mean, I climbed trees. It was, how many of you, I mean, seriously, how many of you have ever climbed a tree, all right? Okay, most of you have done this before. You understand how this all works. So when I got, now that I'm 42 years old, I saw a tree and I was like, there's some dead branches in there. I'm just going to go up there. And I never really even thought anything of it. See, I'm still kind of a boy at heart. 
And it's like, um, you know, I'm, I'm climbing this tree, and then I hear this wor- these words, uh, Rustin, be careful. You know, and I'm thinking, it was Tiffany. She's off to the side, and she's looking. I'm going, I'm 42 years old. I'm a man. I don't need you telling me what to do. So I got down, and uh, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so here's this guy. Think about it. Here's this guy. He's not a kid anymore. He's not a kid. He's an adult, and he's climbing a tree. And not just to cut out some dead branches. He's climbing a tree because he wants to see somebody. Who does he want to see? He wants to just catch a glimpse of Jesus. Now, it goes on to say, when Jesus reached the spot of the sycamore uh, where Zacchaeus is, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Then this is really huge. He says, I must stay at your house today. Not, I'd like to, hey, I sent an email, I never got a back a reply, uh, you know, I've sent a text, what, um, hey, it, would it be okay, I don't know what you got going on today. No, he says, I must. I mean, this isn't, this isn't like a negotiation for Jesus. Jesus is saying, listen, G- Zacchaeus, I have a lot of places to be, but there's one place I must be, and that's with you. So Zacchaeus came down at once, and how did he welcome him? What did it say? And he welcomed him gladly. Now, why is this important? In this moment, this is absolutely huge. In in an honor-shame culture, I mean, uh, Zacchaeus would be like filled with shame. Like everybody would be looking at him going, listen, why would you associate with him? I mean, like when people looked at Zacchaeus, they would look at him and say, listen, I know you and I know your function. I know why you have to be here. Do what you've got to do. But listen, I don't want you to talk to me. I don't want you to live near me. I don't want you to look at me. I don't even want you to look at my dog. All right. I mean, that's how people were feeling about Zacchaeus. They're like, we want to have nothing to do with you. But in this moment, What Jesus is doing in that honor-shame culture, he is actually taking Zacchaeus' shame upon himself. See, in a shame culture like this, in an honor-shame culture, it's like you don't mess with people like that. You don't walk with them, you don't talk to them, and you certainly don't go to their house. If you go to their house, you're associated with them, and what's on them sticks to you. And so what Jesus is saying, listen, I mean, this is why Zacchaeus welcomes him gladly. Because Zacchaeus is like, no one would ever do this for me. No one would ever want to be my friend. No one ever comes over to my house for dinner because nobody wants my shame. But there is one. There is one. There is one, and that is Jesus. Jesus shows up and says, listen, I want to be with you. Just like he says with Phil. See, with Phil Robertson, there was one day, one day that changed Phil Robertson's life is when Jesus said, I want to be with you. See, it changes everything. One day changes everyone's life. It changed Phil Robertson's life, and it's now going to change Zacchaeus' life. And so Zacchaeus welcomes him into his house. See, Jesus in that moment is showing, I am taking your shame upon myself. That's why Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, this is like an after effect. Isaiah 53 talks about it prior to seven, like 700 years prior to Jesus coming, saying he's going to take our infirmities. He's going to take our shame upon himself. And Peter said he did. He did. Look, he himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body and on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed. See, this is the hope that we have in Jesus. Jesus came to make things right for us with him. Jesus came, as Paul says, in that God so loves us so much that he was willing to die for us, even though we were in our own sin and shame. See, that's the good news. The good news is that Jesus came, loves us so much that he was willing to take our shame upon himself, to die for us, rise again, that if we trust in him, that we can have our sins forgiven, we can have a fresh new relationship with God. We can experience new life with him. And see, when so when Zacchaeus sees this, he's going, are you kidding me? So he's absolutely so he sees the, the, the seriousness of this. But that's, you would think the people around are going, oh, isn't that so nice for Zacchaeus? Isn't that awesome? This is really cool. But that's not how people felt. 
Look at verse 7. It said, all the people saw this, and they began to what? What did they begin to do? Okay, now before you read the rest, um, I don't know how many of you have been watching the, the World Series, but anyways, um, I want to talk to you about muttering and what that means, the kind of the intensity of what's going on in this moment. You know, I love watching. It's been a great game. I know things aren't going so well for the Cubs, but hey, we're going to come back, right? Amen. We're going to come back. Anyways, um, so we're excited for that, but the reality is this. When, when, a, when a Cleveland pitcher throws a pitch and he gets a strike, and, uh, and then a Cubbies pitcher throws the same strike but gets a ball, the crowd starts to mutter, right? I mean, so if you're watching the game, and all of a sudden, they're all, there's like, it's not like a, a yelling and a kind of stuff, but they're talking, they're showing, listen, I'm not happy about that call. I'm not happy about that call. It's a bum call. That's exactly what's going on in this moment. When Jesus says, Zacchaeus, I must be, come to your house The crowd's going, no, 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 this is a bum call. No, 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 you don't do this. You don't do this. You don't go there. You don't be with him. You don't walk with him. You don't talk with him. We've written him off. So should you. And they're muttering. They're like, this doesn't happen. That's why they say, he is gone to be the guest of what? Of a sinner. Is there anyone that you have ever known that's been written off before? God takes those people and says, I don't write them off. I don't write him off. He wishes none to perish, but all to come to repentance. That's why he's so patient. Every person matters to him. And that's exactly what's going on here, is that Zacchaeus matters to God. So Jesus says, despite your shame, despite the black marks on your record, despite what everybody thinks of you, I want to have dinner with you. I want you to know that you matter to God. And that I am, the reason why I'm here is to find people like you. And it's in that moment where you see Zacchaeus is like, his whole perspective on Jesus changes. And something happens in his heart as a result of this one day with Jesus. Look at verse 8. It says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything... I will pay back four times the amount. See, something happens when you trust in the Lord and, and, and you see what God has to offer you. He like transfers his righteousness to us as, we, as he takes our sin upon himself. He did this all because he loves us. And when you realize that you have a God that, that you matter to, it changes everything. Now that he has this heart change, like where his heart was once hard and now it's beating again, it's like he sees the people around him differently. It's almost like he hadn't been breathing before today. This one day changed everything. This life change with Jesus changed, changed the trajectory, not only of his eternity, but how he would see the people around him. And he said, listen, he says, Lord, I'm going to take everything that I've got. Look, half my possessions, I'm just going to give it away. To the people that have written me off, to the people that have despised me, to the people that have walked to the other side of the road, I'm going to give it back. And not only, he says, and if I have cheated, the the Greek word is, and since I have cheated. I mean, he's not saying, I'm not really too sure if I've cheated these people. What he's saying is, I know that I have. I know that I've taken advantage of these people, and I'm going to pay back four times the amount. See, something happens in the human heart where we don't want to see them the same way. We, all of a sudden, we want to show that love that we have just experienced from God. And then Jesus says this, verse verse 9 and 10. He says, today, today, it just takes one day, guys. It just takes one day. Today, salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. The idea is that he has trusted in Jesus, believed in him, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. See, Zacchaeus was lost. Zacchaeus was lost 
You know, he's just like Phil Robertson. He's lost. He is, he is struggling, trying to find his way. And you, and you read these stories and you listen to these guys. You say, it just took one day, one day with Jesus and my life forever changed. I find out that I matter to God, that he's the good news, that he came down here and that he died for me and rose again to pay for my sin, to take my shame upon himself and transfer his righteousness onto me. See, listen, this is the God who matters. This is the God that loves us deeply. And when you encounter that love, it stops everything. Like the planets stop. Everything stops spinning. Everything stops moving. You say, listen, I can't live the same way I used to live. I got to see the people around me differently. I got to see them the way God sees them, that they matter to God, that they're not written off, that there is hope, that they can start over, that they can have a redo. They can begin afresh with God. And that's why, that's why we have this message of hope. That's why we have this message of the gospel. The word means good news. And so our heart is the people around us in this community is do the people around us know that they can start over, that they can redo, that they can come back to Jesus, whether they've wandered from him or they've never been with him. They can find him or start again and they can know that their, their lives are forever secure in him. And they could see the people around him. That's the message of hope that we have. We have plenty of Zacchaeuses in our own county that need Jesus. And they need to know that they matter to God. And then we get people that come into our church. We get people that come in here and they say, I want to go uh, somewhere around the world. Somewhere else around the globe to tell them about this good news about Jesus. See, that's what we're talking about. I mean, Acts 1-8. Can you put that up there, Jeff, Acts 1-8? Um, this is the mission that Jesus has given to the, the church. And, 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 and before he leaves, before he goes to heaven, this is what he says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This is what he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses. Like, you're just going to go tell people about me. I mean, that's what that means. In Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. God just stirred the Tom and Song's family to go uh, on the other side of the globe to say there are people there that need to know that they matter to God. They, 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 that no matter where they are, no matter where they've been, no matter what they've gone through, that, that they're not written off by God, that they matter to Him. And that's the message that they're going, and they're going to tell people about Jesus there. M my question for you is, I, I have a heart for people around the world. I also have a heart for people in our own community. My question for you this morning is this, is there somebody that you're praying for? That you're like, man, I would love for one day for them to know the love of the Savior. For them to maybe become a part of a church family where whatever they're going through, whatever they face, they can know that all this stuff, all this is available for them. That God, that they, God hasn't written them off. That they matter to Him. It's like, who are you praying for? Like, what I want you to do right now is I want you to just think about one family. Maybe there's one person that you're like, man, I would love for God to just um, show them his love. This person, I would love for them to know that they matter to God. I hope and pray that one day that they will. Is there one family? Is there one name? Is there one person that you can pray for? And I want you to begin to pray that God would just take your prayers and do a great and mighty work in that person's life. God doesn't write us off. God didn't write off Zacchaeus. And I think if Zacchaeus were here today, he'd be like, man, it just took one day, guys, one day, and my life forever changed. Phil Robertson, one day, and my life forever changed. Rustin Croffle, one day, and my life forever changed. And I'm sure you can say that same. What about those that we're praying for? Can we begin to pray and ask God to do great and glorious things in their lives? We've got some folks that are going to come, and they're going to be up here to pray. So why don't you come on up here? I don't know who who's all going to be praying up here, but um, come on up here and pray. And the rest of us, why don't we stand for closing prayer? And uh, if you have somebody, maybe you have somebody you want to pray for, you're like, man, I've been praying for them. And maybe come on up and pray with these guys and just say, I'm, I'm praying for my friend and that they would come to know Jesus. Or maybe, uh, maybe they know Jesus, but they've just been away from a church family. And I'm praying that they'll get connected to a church family and know how important a family can be in their lives. Um, you come and pray. Maybe there's some things, like my brother-in-law, maybe you've got some stuff going on in your family. Maybe you want to come and just pray. Lift this up to the Lord. They love to pray with you. 
So you come. Let's pray together. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to just uh, talk about how important the church family is. That your word is very clear that we shouldn't give up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. That we make this a priority of our, in our lives. And we know that when we come, that, that your word teaches us that there are things that, that we get guidance, that we get to be a part of a team when, on a mission for you, that we get to have the loving support of the family. And that this is a place where we're not written off, but that God, you give us a brand new start in life. You give us a fresh start. And so, God, we thank you for the good news and the message of hope that we have. Now we pray that you would help us to, to take it into a world that desperately needs you. Maybe there's some in this room, God, that has never surrendered their lives to you. And I pray that, that, that they would just, what are they waiting for? Today's the day, one day, that's all it takes is one day, and Jesus could change your life forever. And I pray, God, this morning, if anyone's in this room that has never surrendered their heart to you, I pray that they would just say, Jesus, I surrender. You came and you lived and you died and you rose again to pay for my sin. I trust in you as my Savior. And now my life has a, a, has a new beginning and a fresh start. And that one day we'll be with you forever. God, your word says that when one person responds to the gospel, when one person trusts in Jesus, all heaven erupts in joy. And I pray right now that heaven is just having a party for all the people that are turning to you, Jesus. God, we pray for the Tom and Songs. We pray you would use them on the other side of the planet where we may never go, but we pray for the people that are around us that you would help us to be your instruments of, of, of sharing the good news of Jesus to those around us. We love you. We give you glory and honor and praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Come on up. Pray with these folks. We'll see you soon. See you tonight, 6 o'clock.